Hello? There we go. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. We're going to get started in just a few minutes here. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Wolf. That is Acacia Clement. On behalf of the New York Racing Association, it is our honor to welcome you to the official post position draw for the grade one $1.5 million Belmont Stakes presented by Naira Bats. We thank you for joining us today as we look forward to a three day celebration of the very best in thoroughbred racing that will feature a staggering 16 stakes races over the next few days including nine grade one events. Now, this year's Belmont Stakes is special for a number of reasons. 
It marks the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's triumph in the 1973 edition, and we'll be commemorating that throughout the week. This is also the first year that our partners at Fox will broadcast the Belmont Stakes to a national television audience. Fox's commitment to presenting the most in-depth and expansive coverage of horse racing is unmatched. And we encourage fans who cannot make it out to Belmont Park on Saturday to tune into Fox Sports for wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival. We're joined today by Kurt Menefee, who will anchor Belmont Day on Fox, as well as Bill Richards producing on Saturday and producer Pete Macheska. Thank you so much for being here. We also want to say a big thank you to our friends from Elmont who are joining us here today as well. And as we remember the honor and accomplishments of Secretariat 50 years ago, we also celebrate the bright future that lies ahead for Belmont Park, which will be completely renovated and modernized beginning in 2024. The future is bright for Belmont Park and for thoroughbred racing here in New York State. All right, I hope everybody's paying attention. Here's how it's going to work. This year, we'll be directly involving the connections that are here with us in the draw itself. Our racing official, Rob McLennan, will select an envelope from the vase behind me, which will list the name of the entry. From there, we'll see a video of that horse, and the connections will come up and select one of the trophies on this table. On the bottom of each trophy is a number. That is your post position. We don't know which is switch and they are in random order and they have been shuffled before we come up here. In the event that a representative is not present today, we have Kevin Schnorr from the racing office overseeing the draw and he's been approved by the stewards to come up and make a selection on behalf of the connections. And once you've chosen your post position, please stick around on the stage for a little chat with me and Greg. And with that, let's draw the race. Tappet Trice. Tappet Trice is first up. Top of the stretch, Tappet Trice is coming onto the outside. Clear the air, drops back. Blazing Sevens is fourth. Mendelssohn's March is fifth. Verifying Tappet Trice going at it for the lead. Eighth of a mile to go, Toyota Bluegrass. Verifying is right there to the inside. Tappet Trice is right alongside. Past the 16th pole, Tappet Trice puts ahead in front. Tappet Trice, Tappet Trice wins the Toyota Bluegrass. Winner of the Bluegrass on behalf of Tappet Trice. Here's trainer Todd Fletcher. Todd, please make your selection. Post position number two, and Todd, come on over. Tappet Trice breaking from the inside. He is a horse that we saw early in his career, struggled a little bit with the kickback and makes that closing run. How do you feel about the inside for him? Well, he did win the Bluegrass from the one hole. The key is getting him out of the gate, getting into position. He's got a big, long stride on him. If we can get him to a good rhythm, I think he's going to like the mile and a half. He seems like a horse that's literally been born to do this and run in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, and he's been training that way. I look forward to it, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Hit show. They reach the top of the stretch and now Hit Show is out in the clear. It's Arctic Arrogance who's got the lead, but Hit Show is ready to pounce on the outside as they approach a final furlong. They are five clear here from General Banker and Hit Show has taken the lead. It's Hit Show who's now striding away. Arctic Arrogance is a game second. Hit Show drops over to the rail, has less than a 16th to go. It's Brad Cox, Manny Franco, Hit Show in the withers. Trainer Brad Cox here with us. Make your selection. Post position seven. So let's talk about here. Come center stage with me. How has this horse progressed since the Kentucky Derby? He come out of in good order. He's had three works since um, there at Churchill. He shipped up. He's had some experience here at Belmont, having trained a week before for the Withers, and um, you know he settled in well. All right. Best of luck.
national treasure. And they're into this wreck. National treasure taken on by Blazing Sevens. Mage wanders inside. Still work to do with him. National treasure dig again. Blazing Sevens. Mage is third. It's national treasure. It's Blazing Sevens putting on a show. And they break this. Who's it going to be? It's going to be national treasure. John Velasquez gets his freakness. Great race in the Preakness Stakes on behalf of National Treasure Assistant Trainer Jimmy Barnes. Alrighty. Make your selection. Post position number four. Jimmy, come on over. National Treasure, of course, with the Preakness, you can face out to the camera here. He, he put the blinkers back on last time. What do you think that did to change how he ran? Well, he had wore blinkers before. Uh, he's a little more forward in the race with the blinkers, so uh, that's why we chose to stay with him. And how has he been doing since the Preakness? Oh, very well. Shipped up from Baltimore and has been very comfortable here and uh, worked out yesterday and looked beautiful. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Thank you. Bill Maricolo. As they race past the quarter mile pole, Il Maricolo still has the lead through three quarters and 11 and two. Big Data right alongside the leader in second. These two three sixteenths from home. Running home from the back is Centro Delantero. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Il Maricolo trying to gut it out. Big Data with every opportunity on the outside. Il Maricolo digging deep. Big Data's not getting by. Il Maricolo finds another gear and he'll win it by a length and a half of the end. All right, owner Eduardo Soto, make your selection. Post position five. So come on over here. Let's talk about this horse who contested some of these big triple crown prep races and what you saw on this horse last time made you decide to go to the Belmont Stakes. It's uh, perhaps a one in a lifetime chance and uh, I love to gamble. How excited are you to be on this stage in one of the premier races in this game? To be in the presence of the people that I see here, it's an absolute honor, and let's roll. Best of luck. Okay, thank you. Archangelo. Archangelo on the outside, three quarters, one thirteen and one, and here is Archangelo now to grab the lead from Bishop's Bay. Archangelo, Bishop's Bay, fighting back again on the inside as they move for the sixteenth pole. It is Bishop's Bay and Archangelo, a terrific stretch duel here in the Peter Pan. Bishop's Bay has a head in front. Archangelo counters on the outside. It's a photo finish. A thriller in the Peter Pan. Owner John Ebert joining us. Make your selection. Post position number three for Archangelo. John, this horse has made huge strides. What a race last time out. What a, ra <clears throat> what a race. We felt it the whole stretch. Now, I know that you're somebody that has only had a few horses. How exciting for you to be in the Belmont Stakes. It's unbelievable to be with all these Hall of Fame trainers and everybody. And Jenna's done a great job. It's just it's a dream. Best of luck. Thank you. Red Route One. Red Route One is moving in high gear on the outside in the white cap. It's Tappet Shoes with the lead to victory formation. Red Route One to the outside, final 16th in the bathhouse row. Tappet Shoes, Red Route One trying to get him. Tappet Shoes, Red Route One, very close. All right, uh, Scott, go ahead and make your selection. We have Steve on Zoom as well. We'll get to in a minute. Post position nine for Red Route One. 
with us via Zoom, trainer Steve Asmus. And Steve, thanks for joining us. Um, I had heard you talk about this horse before, saying that you still had not got to the bottom of him. What makes you think there's a lot more with this horse? Oh, can you hear us, Steve? We may not have Steve. All right, we did lose him. We tried, yeah. We'll move on. <laughs> Anything can happen. Forte. Less than a quarter of a mile to come, and Cyclone Mischief, he's up for a fight, tries to turn away Mage, Forte better hurry up, final 16th of a mile, Forte starts to gather in the top horses, here comes Forte, this is going to be very close, but the champion prevails, Forte wins. Two-year-old champion Forte, we have co-owner Mike Rapoli now, you may make your selection, what do you got? Post position number six for Forte. Mike, come on over. Uh, Mike, we know it's been a roller coaster of emotions the last couple of months with Forte. How's he been doing coming into this Belmont? He's doing great. I mean, he's training really well. Um, obviously, he didn't run in the Derby, but he hasn't missed any training. And, uh, you know, we're excited. This is We still think this is the best three-year-old in the crop. And I think on Saturday, he's going to prove that. This is horse racing in a nutshell, isn't it? You've had a lot of horses, the, the highs and the lows of the game. I think I might be the only owner that has scratched two derby favorites ever. So uh, I'm the first one to do that. But, you know, listen, you say highs and lows. Most, most owners don't get the highs, so um, the lows are part of the game. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Tap it, shoes. Tap it, shoes, picking up from fourth. Gem Collection streams away in fifth. They're homeward bound. Three quarters, one minute, 13.55 seconds. Here comes Tap it, shoes. Tap it, shoes, charging hard now for Corey Vannery. Tap it, shoes. Just went past and edges left. Zizi's Prince is staying on. More than five toward the inside. It's Tap it, shoes. Tap it, shoes. Went to the front. A bit erratic through the stretch for Sealand. But Tap it, shoes will come coasting home. Tap it, shoes. Finishes on top from more than five. All right, trainer Brad Cox, make your selection. The rail for Tappet Shoes, and it was brought to my attention when Secretariat won this race 50 years ago. He broke from the inside post. Not a bad place to be in the 50-year 50, 50 anniversary of his uh, accomplishment. Talk to us about Tappet Shoes and what you saw in him last time with the decision to go to the Belmont State. He stepped up. He had a good bit of time between uh, that race and his recent run in February. He's a horse that's moving forward. He's continuing to get better. We expected it. Given his pedigree, he's a half to cyber knife. He was a horse that obviously got better as so he got a little bit older as well. So, um, you know, he's, the more he does it, the better he's getting. We saw a horse go gate to wire in the Preakness. How close do you want him to be to the pace? Uh, Given the one hole, I mean, he, we're going to send him out of there running. We're, you know, it's just uh, we, we, we like all of them to break and go forward. Not all of them do that, but that's going to be the intent. Thank you very much. You may be back in a moment. You, wanna, you can wait if you want. <laughs> the killing me. Angel of Empire. And Angel of Empire has ranged into the lead here. Two Eagles River drops back on the inside. Toward the outside, King Russell is running on. Reincarnate in the second flight with airtime and Rocket Can. Angel of Empire and Flavian Pratt. Angel of Empire wins the Arkansas Derby and wins it clear. Well, Brad Cox here with us once again. Brad, um, a lot of choices for you here. 
Post position at number eight for Angel of Empire, the Arkansas Derby winner. Brad, uh, blinkers going on on Saturday. Can you tell us about the equipment change? Yeah, he's trained in them all winter. Uh, we just never made a change, obviously. He was running very well, and he ran well last time. Flavian come back and said, you know, it might not be a bad idea to add the blinkers to him. We'll see if it works out. How's he done after that third place finish in the Derby? Really good. His works have been fantastic, just like they were leading up to the Kentucky Derby. So he showed us, every, you know, obviously ran a great race there, and he showed us all the signs that he's continuing to move do well, move forward physically, and uh, very happy with where he is leading up to this. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We did not get an opportunity to, to talk to Steve Asmus and Ken Scott Blasey. Can you come back up real quick? We know how you love interviews, Scott. Another one for, for your connections, it's got to feel special, a gun runner, Winchell Thoroughbreds. How is he doing coming up to the Belmont? He's not a real big tout in the morning, but he's a very consistent horse, and um, hopefully we have some pace in the race. He definitely needs that. I don't think the draw affects us that much. You can't really take a horse out of their game. Is there enough pace to set up for you from what you see? I don't know. You just hope. Sometimes you think there's pace and there's not, and then other times they go faster than you think they do. So we'll just have to see. Best of luck. Thanks for coming back up. Thanks. All right, now we will get a chance to go through the field once again and uh, give a little recap of the morning line odds. Starting things off with the number one tap at shoes, trainer Brad Cox will be ridden by Jose Ortiz, 20 to one on the morning line, owned by Spencer Farm, Steve Landers, Marty Schwartz, Michael Dubb, 10 Strike Racing, Jim Backey, Title Town Racing Stables, Kieber Racing, Big Easy Racing LLC, Rick Cantor, and Michael Caruso. The number two tap at tries, trained by Todd Pletcher, will be ridden by Louis Saez, three to one on the morning line, owned by Whisper Hill Farm and Gainsway Stable. The three is Archangelo, owned by John Ebert, trained by Jenna Antonucci. John Ebert's Blue Rose Farm, that is, will be ridden by Javier Castellano. The number four, National Treasure, five to one on the morning line. Trained by Bob Baffert, will be ridden by John Velasquez, owned by SF Racing, LLC, Starlight Racing, Madiket Stables, LLC, Rob Masterson, Stone Street Stables, Jay Schoenfarber, Waves Edge Capital, LLC, and Catherine Donovan. The number five, Il Miracolo, owned by Eduardo Sotos Alexandres, LLC, trained by Antonio Sano, ridden by Marcos Meneses, 30 to 1 on the morning line. Continuing on, number six, Forte, trained by Todd Pletcher, owned by Rapoli Stables, St. Elias Stable. Arad Ortiz Jr. will ride five to two on the morning line. Post position seven, Hit Show, trained by Brad Cox, owned by Gary and Mary West. Manny Franco will ride 10 to one on the morning line. Angel of Empire will break from post eight, also trained by Brad Cox, owned by Alba Family Stable. Flavian Pratt will be aboard. Seven to two on the morning line. From post nine, it's Red Route One. Winchell Thoroughbreds owns Steve Asmus and trains. Joel Rosario will ride 15 to one on the morning line. All right, that's the field for the 155th running of the Belmont Stakes 50th anniversary of the Great Secretariat, Greg. Yeah, some great storylines, obviously, in this race. Uh, probably first and foremost among those that we get to see the two-year-old champion who has been so consistent finally get his chance in a Triple Crown race this year. And great to see Forte back. As you heard from Michael Poli, unfortunately did not get to run in the Kentucky Derby, but a horse that we saw be successful here in New York, too, and uh, back for a try in the Belmont Stakes. Todd Pletcher with two in the race as he looks for his four fifth win in the Belmont Stakes, having won it last year as well. And he's had great success in this race, and one of his horses as well that sire has had pretty good success in this race as well tap it Trice, sired by tap it also the sire of tap it shoes he is also looking for his fifth winner in the belmont stakes tap it has just been so impressive and as you said the storyline's incredible great to see trainer jenna antonucci in the race looking for uh, to become the first female trainer to win the belmont stakes all right we'd like to invite all the representatives forward to take a group photo up on the stage if you could come up Don't everybody run up all at once. <laughs> You'll all be very happy to have your picture taken on Saturday if it's in the winter circle. You could do a little photo now. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. We can 
dagger. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I don't think everybody was paying enough attention. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being so patient for us to get started as well. And we'd like to invite you all to stay for lunch. Thanks, everybody.